Good evening everyone. It's going to be a little video this one. I'm back at Hadley Castle in Essex on the Thames Estuary overlooking Canvey Island tonight. It's quite late because I finished work at nine o'clock, shot down here. It was about an hour's drive or so I'd say really. And I'm joined by my mate Mark. He's just off camera. I'll, I'll show him and he's set up in a, in a little minute. We've decided to try and sort of, well, sort of stealth camp beside the, the last remaining drum tower. Quite high up on a hill. You probably can hear my gas stove in the background. That's the outkit, Kraku. Uh, I've got to be in work tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. with my first client. So, sort of, not gonna, we're not gonna get absolutely shit faced. I have got this new cider though. This was from. Uh, East Sussex when I was down there last weekend so it's a green goblin by Thatcher's medium dry cider it's five percent pretty cool bottle design quite liked that I've not had this before the green goblin came to Somerset following his love of bittersweet apples he is believed to dance amongst the orchards to fight off evil spirits and protect our apples, but is rarely seen. Green Goblin Cider is a full-flavoured, bittersweet blend of apples, beautifully balanced to give a fresh character with a medium dry finish. Quite a nice little story. So let's crack this bad boy open, give it a go. Hopefully it's going to be nice because it's all we've got tonight. Anyways, cheers everyone to a cracking midweek wild camp. Hey, I haven't done one for a while. Oh, lovely smell to it. It's not bad, a little bit sharp at first and it doesn't taste that fizzy. I don't mind that. It's got um, kind of like a sour apple sort of taste to it. I'll give it a 7.25 out of 10. I really, really like the, the bottle design, the label and stuff really cool for shelters tonight i'll show you those in a little bit as well once i've had something to eat i've got the wild country helm one haven't used that for a while and i think mark's got his nature hike tagger one which is kind of like a a, a cheaper shall we say but no less quality chinese version of the helm one we're sort of tucked behind one of the walls of the 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 remaining drum t well next to the remaining drum tower but this is sort of the one opposite it that doesn't make sense but anyway and we've got brilliant views of the estuary and all the lights and stuff might be able to turn you around and see you can see some of the lights there over in the distance there's Canvey you can see South End and the pier the longest pier in the world uh, I think you might even be able to see as far as over to Kent all right Andy Yes, it's a lovely part of the world, this. we just got to be a bit careful, though, because I've heard stories of like wild campers getting kicked off here and the locals being a bit, keeping an eye on the place and stuff, but we should be all right, because then I've seen other stuff where people have had a mass bivvy bag camp of about 30 people in the middle of the castle. So, And last time when we wild camped here and we was just down below it, there was a group of people camping in a massive tent by the drum tower. So swings and roundabouts who knows but for dinner a Moroccan bean stew from a, an army ration pack so it's a vegetarian one unfortunately so that's probably done now I've got a three mint tea that I've just made I've got some more biscuits <laughs> left over from last weekend's camp on the South Downs some custard cream some bourbons to dip in me hot drinks you know, it's, it's getting cold now. Winter is on its way. It's an icy wind. We're like done up to the nines and biscuits and hot drinks <laughs> and hearty food are needed. Got some stuff for breakfast in the morning. We're going to get up for sunrise, get the shelters packed away and then we can sort of sit here, chill out, have a quick bit of brekkie and then head off. So should, should, it should work. You know, it is a micro adventure. I'll come back to you when I've got something more interesting to say and I've eaten as well. I'm starving. Chat to you in a little bit. Right, it's coming up to midnight. I've had dinner. 
still finishing off the cider. I've had me three mint tea. Next time for a Maltesers hot chocolate and some bourbons and some custard creams. I'll go for bourbon first. This is my favourite thing to do on camp at the moment. I feel like a right old man. Well, it's quarter past one now, so we're probably thinking of hitting the hay. And there's my helm one. Here's Mark, first time you've seen him. Hello, good evening. He's having problems with his new phone, he's not happy about it, so hey. it's been pissing him off all night. Keeps locking me out. Keeps locking him out. Uh, I know, that's modern technology for you really, so... Stick with your old phones. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, I got my chair tonight, uh, as kind of my one luxury item really, other than the cider. Although, depends on your point of view, that's a, an essential item. Mm -hmm. So we're just finishing that, and then Mark here has got his Nature Hike Tagger 1. There's the lights over at Canvey, I believe, yeah. And then you might just be able to make it out. Head torch we pick up. There we go. There's the the drum tower, the famous drum tower of Hadley Castle, and you can see that for miles around. And then we're sort of just camped sort of behind the wall. We've got to sort of be a bit careful because some houses in the distance there that look like they overlook the castle. The actual castle itself is other side of that wall, like the interior of it. So we're kind of on the edge of it, really. To be honest with you, just uh, refer back to my other video I did at Hadley Castle. That will explain all the history and stuff. I'm just going to keep this as a short one, really. So we're next to this other drum tower as well that's here. You can see where I think what brought about the demise of this castle was actual like landslips and stuff, and you can see where it slid down the side of the hill there. So this is home for the night. Apologies, the wind's picking up a bit, and I haven't plugged the microphone in, so could be a bit of wind noise on this this segment. Well, that wind's picking up now. Right, I chat to you in the tent. I'm inside Helm 1 now, temperature is noticeably warmer, Mark's in his Tagger 1 and for once I've actually picked a nice flat little spot, it's in a slight little dip actually so the tent sits nicely in that so hopefully I'm going to get a good night's sleep here and I've missed being in this tent, it's a cracking little tent, I've managed to fit my chair uh, still set up inside the porch. I mean, it's sort of pushing you know the the door out a little bit, but it still zips up, and it doesn't encroach that much on the actual internal space. Like you can just sort of see it there. I've still got plenty of room in here to like get changed and pack up and stuff in the morning even cook breakfast and I can still get in and out the door as well I'm going to uh, switch these little mini lanterns out and get some sleep as I say it's gone 1am 1, 1 now got to be up at 7 so I want to get a few hours sleep at least the kit by the way is, is nothing different got me go light down sleeping bag I've got the OEX fulcrum pad with me tonight instead I've got my Thermarest Silver Z Light pad cut down a bit shorter. The Decathlon inflatable pillow, Thermarest stuff sack pillow, also the Helm 1, the OEX chair, these little ultralight lanterns up here, uh, Outkit Kraku gas stove. I've got a little mini Esbit uh, solid fuel stove as well as a backup. Only bought two litres of plain water with me half a litre of flavoured water, one cider, outkit titanium pots and mug, a little bit of food, uh, got it all in my Osprey Talon 33 litre rucksack, my orange rucksack that I've had for years, 
it's got a lot of miles on it that rucksack and I just want to try and squeeze it all in there and I've managed to do that to be fair I was wearing quite a lot of my layers already but then it was cold so yeah wasn't too much gear it seems to have done the job anyways I'm waffling on I'll see you in the morning everyone good night morning everyone it's probably coming up to near 8 a.m. now me and Mark was up at about 7 a.m. just before that we've caught the sunrise the Sun is now up and in my eyes it's still pretty cold it was very cold this morning uh, I say this morning like an hour ago or so and yeah we've awoke to a lovely lovely morning here at Hadley Castle we've seen one dog walker so far she was very friendly, no issues, just asked us are we here for the to photography and stuff. Mark was the diplomat again, did the talking um, <clears throat> and I just got the tripod out and I think I think the tripod was the thing that was like oh okay you're here to take pictures and stuff so you know it's kind of like that thing when if you just put a high vis jacket on people just go oh okay you know and they just sort of they think it's fine, you can get away with so much if you wear a high vis or carry a tripod. Yeah, that's my my advice for, for wild camping. So high vis in the woods, yeah, to stay stealthy and a tripod, no problems. Anyway, <coughs> I've left my high vis in the car. The weather last night was really calm. It was just a bit cold. <clears throat> not that I was cold in there, I was toasty, but then I was wearing absolutely everything. There's Mark, by the way. Morning. And uh, apparently I had a night terror as well, and I didn't even know about this one. 
normally I have a rough idea when I have them and stuff, but this one was quite bad apparently. But I thought I slept really well. I just rolled over a couple of times, but I was kind of half asleep when I did. It's only going to be a very short, brief video this, so like I say, please do refer back to my other Hadley Castle video uh, for more history and stuff. But we've done it. It's something that we set out to do last time we were here. We thought we're not going to be able to camp here in the castle because uh, we heard rumours that it was heavily patrolled and stuff. So we settled with camping down the outside of the castle. It was a nice spot there, but not as good as this. And yeah, in the morning, if you remember from that video, we came up here and there was someone in a massive tent right next to the drum tower and we was really pissed off we was like we're gonna come back here and camp like if they can do it so can we so we've done it that's the main thing that's another one ticked off the uh, the bucket list <laughs> It's 9am, had breakfast, just sat on the, the castle wall there. We've seen a couple more people. Everyone's been really, really friendly here. There's been no kind of animosity. You know, what are you doing camping here? All the, none of that. None of the, like, the rumours that we've heard. So, I don't know, maybe we've just picked a good day. I don't know. So that's where I was, leaving no trace. A little bit of flat grass. And then Mark was somewhere around here. I mean, he's literally, you can't see any trace of him. I mean, not even flat grass, really. As I just mentioned, we're all packed up. We're heading off now, back to the cars. And that's the end of this little video. I hope you enjoyed it. Apologies I didn't go through a thorough history of the castle, but like I say, I'll put a link below this video to my other Hadley Castle video where I give a, a thorough documentary of the castle, shall we say. And yeah, it was a bit of a quick one you know sort of last well almost last minute I mean you know just left work late last night and just headed down here so 
you know, haven't had tons of time to film. Got to be in work in less than two hours now. So, yeah, we're going to keep it pretty brief. But it's been good. And this is something that we've both wanted to do for a while, really. So we've we've ticked it off off the list of of camps that we are going to conquer, we are going to do. And it feels good to have achieved that. It's an absolutely beautiful ruin, this castle. It's one of my favourite castles. Just the views are amazing. I could come back here again and again. It's the sort of place that I probably wouldn't want to push me luck too much with, though, with in terms of wild camping. So, you know, I might come back here a couple more times, but sort of spread them out a bit, really. I'm not going to, as I say, sort of push it too much and come here, like, every fortnight or something. Yeah, it's the end of the video. Cheers for watching, everyone. Cheers, Mark, for joining me. Pleasure. Pleasure. Never a chore. Thank you. Take care of yourselves, everyone. Look after each other. Stay safe. And get out there and explore. Until next time, see ya. Bye. Bye.